Welcome back to Chairman of the Boards, the 107th most listened to gear podcast. <laughs> You're making that up. <laughs> On the line. <laughs> I actually, you know, I, I sometimes will, I'll get like, you know, because it's like registered to my email, I'll get like an email. It'll say like, you're the number three guitar centric uh, podcast in Bangladesh, you know, or like some of these other countries. Um, and so uh, for all of our fans out there in Bangladesh, just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> There's not a lot of metrics, you know, I think that like, cause iTunes is sort of like the, you know, the high watermark. So they don't, they don't give away a lot of information about how they're doing rankings or where your ranking is um we can just kind of see our downloads but we appreciate all those who are listening and, and we're sorry that we took uh, a week off and in part of the reason that we were taking a week off is that we were establishing our own separate entity our own separate channel for chairman of the boards so without further ado i'm going to turn it over to brian and you might hear that i'm a little gruff today i'm getting getting over covid and luckily, I can't transmit it through a microphone. So these guys, we're all getting together. And Brian's going to lead us today in a conversation about MIDI. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome. Uh, so yeah, today's topic is going to be on MIDI. And I think we can all kind of say MIDI can be scary a little bit. It can be daunting. There's just... I think MIDI is very under misunderstood, let's be honest, just because a lot of people see it and they're just like, they they don't know about this. It's like getting anything new where it's kind of like the manual is 100 pages long and you are just kind of scared. But I think we can um, have a really good conversation about us understanding MIDI, some tips and tricks on how others can understand MIDI and just kind of go from there. So that's... You know, that's what I'm thinking. So, Love it. so yeah, let's go. Um, I have a couple of diagrams. I'm just gonna pop one up real quick to kind of kick us off. So, if you're listening on one of the Spotify or Apple iTunes, just um, envision this, and I'll I'll do it best as I can to explain it. I just need you to uh, allow me. There we go. All right. So, if you're looking at the diagram. I have a couple different things. So, first, beautiful diagram, right? yeah, gorgeous, real, real simple. I like the color blue. Love the shade so. of blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just something about blue. I just like it. I wear all black mostly, <laughs> but I do like blue. So, um, we have a couple different MIDI controllers. If you really think about it, uh, is you have like a MIDI controller, obviously, but then you have a MIDI plus loops controller. So a MIDI controller has zero loops, so that's like the MC6, MC3, MC8. Uh, some Musicom, there's like the new, there's a new little Musicom, some RJM LT stuff, um, as well as um, disaster. disaster, yeah, disaster area design. Um, or if you want to go old school, you got the MIDI yeah. mouse yes, or the MIDI, MIDI mouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so like there's a. <laughs> I have never seen the MIDI moose. I know there's there's just one controller. Uh, well, the Canadians are kind of more into the MIDI moose. Is that right? We love the moose. See, I don't know about. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about the moose. Um, the the, the, the caribou. The caribou. I do know about this one called like molten something. I had it. I think I have it in the drawer from someone where like you can title. It's kind of voltage. Yeah, the mold. Yeah, so it's kind of like the. I guess it's kind of like the quartz where you can do like you can put the name on it but it's just sending like a, a piece it's just oh i guess yeah it's just it's sending pc messages it's not doing midi clock or anything so there's a lot of like different types of midi controllers as well as midi with loops or for like analog pedals where some people are like i don't understand is it two separate units so there's you know all sorts of units but i'm curious if you guys if you guys have more time or interaction with like midi controllers or midi with loops or if it's a little bit of both i guess i guess we could just start here and kind of go from there i've always kind of steered towards i've had rigs with both but i've steered towards ones with loops um yeah because i like the idea of hitting one button on let's say on on screen right now is the rjm pbc 10 
hitting one button and I can send out MIDI commands at the same time as turning true bypass loops within that same MIDI controller on and off. And so I've always kind of gravitated towards that, but I have had a rig in the past with an uh, RJMLT, which is MIDI only, and a couple of H9s, and really enjoyed that as well for that. That was a bit of a smaller rig, so loops were kind of not as important to me. Um, so I've done both, but I've always gravitated towards a MIDI controller with loops just for the added control. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Mason? I guess it depends on the generation and the early uh, and earlier pedal boards. Um, there weren't many options for things with MIDI plus loops, uh, you know, like in the 2000s. And so a lot of guys were having to kind of make it almost how you would make an, a, an old school rack, like a Bradshaw system where you had loops uh, on, on, you know, in a rack that were, you know, just send and return loops and then you had a floor controller that was basically just the MIDI controller that was, you know, sending messages back to the 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 loops telling them to come in and out. In for the purposes of a pedal board, I find it a lot less practical to disaggregate the loops from the MIDI controller. Mostly just I mean I'm sure that there's circumstances where maybe it, it's it makes more sense from a spacing standpoint, but from a organizational standpoint, I think it's a little easier to have it all consolidated like how it is in a PVC ten or a PVC six or a Musicom, you know, MK whatever number they're up to now. <laughs> I think five um, or six, it, yeah. Yes, but it I mean it's not wrong or right. I think it I think it depends on of what it is that you're going for in 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 consolidation and stuff like that. I've I used I didn't use the MC8, but I used the ML5 once as like a disaggregated loop send and return connected to an HX effects, and then use the HX effects as the MIDI controller to bring in um, effects from the ML5 that was wired into the the send and return loop of the HX yeah. for like analog overdrives, which is where I kind of thought the HX wasn't as good. Um, so I've done stuff like that in the past where I've, you know, mixed mixed and matched them. But generally, I prefer MIDI with loops in the same house. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see, which is interesting. I, I even call it like the hybrid rigs. When you see them with like a little MC3 and they have a bunch of analog pedals, but the, like the MC3 or the Disaster DMC3 or something, whatever it is, is controlling all their MIDI stuff. Um, that's where like the ML5, the um, RJM, the new X Gizmo, and and different little things like the DPC Micro can come into play. Um, I see a lot of these on like oh, no, I can't see it, uh, like angled boards. Like you'll, they'll put the ML5s and stuff underneath just to kind of hide hide them, um, and then everything else up on top. Um, but I mean, there, there's advantages to having you know, that analog pedals where you still step on and a MIDI controller because you're just navigating. Um, but I think when it comes down to it is like finding like a unit that can do MIDI and loops sometimes just simplifies things. Sometimes it makes it easier. Um, it may look a little more daunting, but it's 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 not that bad. But um, but yeah, so I, I would say from talking, you know, talking through this already, uh, I'm I'm curious if you guys have like a favorite like what what's your favorite of a controllers if you have a preference i think we've done this in the past as we talked about stuff uh but i think if like you were to recommend like i'm a beginner okay i'm Ch i'm charlie okay i'm gonna pull i'm charlie. gonna pull the grant i'm gonna pull the grant i'm charlie so and charlie. uh hello hi hi charlie hi i'll just are you are you a you're a midi fanatic um, no, I'm new to MIDI. And, Have you subscribed uh, to the chairman of the board's uh, YouTube YouTube obvi channel yet, Charlie? Obvi obviously. Good man. I did Good last man. night. Um, so Ian wrote us a review on iTunes. <laughs> no, de definitely did not do that <laughs> Sorry, part. Charlie, we keep interrupting you. <laughs> <laughs> so say I'm brand new to MIDI and I'm listening to this podcast and um, you know, it's it's it scares me to think about MIDI controllers because Anytime I see someone that posts about a MIDI controller, all the people that are asking questions are like, oh, yeah, MIDI's too scary. MIDI, you know, MIDI is intimidating. Where would you suggest I start 
at the beginning when I'm looking for like a MIDI controller. Like say I have six analog pedals and a couple of delays and I'm looking, you know, to make things easier. What would you guys suggest? I would probably, I would probably start, uh, Charlie, by asking you, when you think about MIDI and what it could do for you, what do you envision? I would say like, what do you want MIDI to do for you that you can't currently do now? And I think that's going to inform maybe the direction we go with recommending a controller. So what okay. do you want to get out of MIDI? This is what uh, I, I, to be honest, I know we're kind of playing around because your name actually isn't Charlie. Um, <laughs> so we're having a fun game here, but this is a conversation I have all the time. I don't yeah. think there's one answer. And so no. I would say, what do you actually want to get out of MIDI? Um, simplicity, um, less tap dancing on the fly, more reliability and, um, being able to focus on playing, uh, because when you're playing that, that guitar part and you have to step on seven different things all at the same time while still playing and you're, you know, you have things in your ears, you know, click track and MD talking and everything, just simplifying it. Cause that aside. I personally get the, the same question constantly as people are like, I don't know what controller to get. I don't know this. Like there's, there's just, there's a lot of options. There's, it's, it's a big open ocean of MIDI controllers swimming around, you know, in the ocean trying to figure out what's going to be the best. This is the tone ocean now. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, don't put your MIDI <laughs> controller in salt water. Don't, don't, don't put your MIDI controller in any water. But, um, I just, I just think... Um, I'm going to set Charlie your side because that was okay, a fun joke. Um, <laughs> see, you. <laughs> sorry, Charlie. Um, I just, I just think uh, a lot of people honestly just don't know where to start and they watch YouTube videos, which these, I mean, heck, this is a YouTube video and a podcast. I just think there's a lot of people that put out this, you can't believe this MIDI controller and they watch the video and they're like, oh my gosh, I need to get it. And then they get it and they're like, oh my gosh, this is not what I need it. Yep. So I think a good baseline of kind of like like your pro like almost like a pros and cons list. And I'm curious of like what you guys would say like six analog pedals, two digital, you know, two digital with MIDI and a volume pedal. Like what do you like what would you ask, you know, a client coming in Mason like of your artists that you do in a month like 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 hey man, I got all these pedals. What do you what are you thinking? Like what would you say? I would say in le if you're playing live would be the only real time that I think you would uh, th there would be a, a real advantage of using a switcher. If you're playing at home or you're in a studio, just there's a lot less. And, and I think that that's shown by a lot of the rigs that you see, of like a lot of the session guys. Most of them don't have MIDI rigs anymore. Most of them have kind of just like pretty straight ahead, like serial pedal board rigs. Maybe they're stereo. You know, stuff like that. Sometimes. But I would say that if somebody's first getting into MIDI, I think that you sort of have to temper their expectations to understand that this is probably not going to be their last MIDI rig. <laughs> and that they're going to have to, like, invest some time in sometimes throwing them into the deep end of the pool will have them actually sort of be frustrated with the whole system. And so usually if it's somebody who's kind of new... And they're and they're not willing to invest a lot of time. And by the way, if somebody if if I ask somebody how much time are you willing to invest in learning the software, whatever time they give you, divide it by two. Just say I'm willing to spend eight hours. It's like really treacherous, you know. It's like reading a, a, a like a textbook, you know, on on you know, I don't know, trigonometry. It's it's like, it's it's really dense. It's not sexy. It's not an interesting read. You know, like, you know, MIDI didn't live this, 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 you know, bountiful life, you know, that you get to read about, you know, <laughs> MIDI's humble beginnings. You're beginning to learn about, you know, CC messages and PC messages and which MIDI channel you're going to set your pedals to. It's, it's, it's not... It's not as easy, I think, for people that are coming to this who have never done it before as, as they think. And, and I think that they lose steam quickly. Yeah. So usually I'll say like a, if in that situation, like the easiest controller I think to work with is probably the boss. And it's not that expensive. And if they got really ticked off and didn't like it, 
they, you know, they could have gotten an ES5. They could have put all their overdrive devices in there and then they could send MIDI out to their two digital devices and they would only have to program two MIDI channels and they'd only have to, to, you know, worry about, you know, sending some, you know, CCs to them to turn them on and off, you know, outside of the loops. And, and that would be a pretty easy way to get, get a hang of it. The boss one is pretty forgiving. It's pretty user friendly. It's not the best one out there by, by any means, but they could reorder some loops and, and it's hard to get into trouble on that one. The RJM you can get into trouble on if you start, you know, if you get your wires crossed, that's for sure. So yeah. I, I would, I would say get the, get something easy with the expectation that as you log more hours, you become more comfortable. You start to understand the system. You'll be able to appreciate what the RJM or, or the Musicom or some more advanced switcher can do for you because you'll have, you know, cut your teeth on one that was, you know, a little, a little less good. You know, yeah. it's just like, you know, when you first start playing guitar, your parents don't buy you a custom shop because <laughs> you don't really have any way to, to, to appreciate the difference between, you know, uh, a made in Mexico classic player series and a custom shop. At that point, you're, you know, you're just figuring out how to get your fingers on the frets. Yeah. I would say as well, yeah. uh, as far as like beginner ones, I really appreciate Morningstar stuff. Obviously, they don't make an uh, they don't make a MIDI and loop controller, but their computer editor makes it so that you have a lot of information at your fingertips. Like they have a MIDI library built into the the editor, so you can search a pedal and instantly you have CCs, PCs, how to Which program is channels. Yeah. It, they they've made it really easy. It can do quite a bit as well. Not as much as an RJM controller, but it can do a lot that I would say um, it's also a, a one to, I would recommend for guys getting started um, that, that they do it. They make it quite accessible. I'll say that. Yeah, I'm trying to, tried opening it, but so they, uh, the cool, oh, right there, I can do it. Um, let's see if I can do this. If you're, no, I can't. So the cool thing about the morning, oh, okay. So the cool about the morning star stuff, and see if I can share. If you, oh, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If sometimes you might have to close the window, Brian, and then reopen it with the new thing that you want to share. Can we see this one? There it is. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Okay. All right. So if you're if you're looking, if you're watching, looking obviously with your eyes, uh, if you're listening, <laughs> always looking with the eyes. Um. If you're listening, uh, Morningstar has done a really great thing is they have a desktop editor. So where you can, it's like a web editor. So you don't even have to like download. I think you can download an actual editor, but they give you the option to where you can just go online and you can kind of just pick everything that you need. Like I think the MIDI dictionary or yeah, the dictionary, like, as you can see, they have different, all sorts of stuff already set up but then you can even you like you can search like timeline i think you can search timeline and it comes up i could be wrong but it's it's supposed to do where maybe it's because i'm in their library mode. yeah library where is that i don't know i i, I don't have a, as much experience uh i have done a couple of these controllers but that's the cool thing about morningstar as well as rgm and i'm sure boss has done some stuff too and Musicom is that they actually give you the option to like some devices already have a lot of the MIDI controls programmed in because I will say programming a MIDI controller can be can be daunting. Um, I did a consult program for someone that's like, I need this, 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 and this done. Super simple. It takes you like an hour. And I was like, oh, that's not an hour's worth. Of, that's like four or five hours worth of work because of the, the amount of DC messages, a lot of the devices weren't actually physically in the editor. So it just, it, it becomes really time consuming. But when you get these controllers that have a lot of the stuff already programmed in, it's like a point and click. You're like, all right, bypass, expression, all these things that you check the values. Um, it's just, it makes life a lot easier. And I think a big part is that you'll, you know, some people, it's like, when you're really hungry and you go to a restaurant 
So you order the full rack of ribs and Every time. all this, all this, oh, always. And you order the corn and the mashed potato, all sorts of food. And you get it and you sit down and you then you eat like a quarter of it. And you're just like, wow, I guess I wasn't as hungry as <laughs> people do the same thing with MIDI controllers. Like I need the biggest and baddest one. I need the, the, the 6X and I need to do uh, this type of routing. And I, but I needed to be able to do wet, dry, wet four cable method, stereo, mono. So they start like dipping into all these, like I needed to be able to do anything and everything. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you know how to use a MIDI controller? And they're like, no, that's the first step. It's like, don't, don't see all these amazing possibilities and just go, I need all of those. Cause obviously we all want those every capability that you can do, but until you know how to turn that loop on and off, or you know how to program a preset, everything else becomes obsolete because you're never going to get there. And then you're going to be mad that you wasted all that money. I've definitely seen um, that happen quite a few times with yes. customers that oh, yeah. their eyes are bigger than their metaphorical stomachs. Uh, you can only eat three <laughs> ribs, but you want 24. Obviously. And then inevitably they get their rig back and like, Hey, my rig's mm -hmm. not working. And like, mm -hmm. well, show me what you're doing. And they, they haven't looked at the basic manual of this is how to turn a pedal on and off with MIDI. This is how you yep. create a preset and all of that time and money. It's like 18 months later and they still don't know how to do the basic programming of their rig. Cause like what yep. Mason was alluding to, they weren't up for putting in the time, uh, yes. to, to learn the basics. And so honestly, I mean, we've all kind of been there in different areas of our lives. Like eyes are bigger than our stomachs or something. I think with MIDI stuff, all of us offer some sort of MIDI consult, I'm sure. Sometimes it's worth just spending a couple hundred bucks for a couple of hours of time. Get those basics explained to you so that you can have a, a jumping off platform to yeah. really dive in or just set aside a day on a weekend and just get to reading because that's what that's honestly what it's probably going to take. Um, but after you put in that initial investment, everything with MIDI, everything becomes so much easier. Mm -hmm. um, but if you try and skip that first, that first step of how do I send a PC message, you're mm -hmm. just going to be pulling your hair out and no one wants to be prematurely bald. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, another big thing, and I, it actually it happens pretty often is that I'll have people that are like, I need this board by this date. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Like I, I suggest, I suggest you take the next week or two, probably two weeks and learn the controller, learn the board, learn what you're doing. And he goes, Oh no, I got a gig the next day. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, okay. And he goes, yeah, I've already been watching the preset songs and set list. And I go to all this stuff. And then I get like a Facebook message or Instagram message at one 30 in the morning and all caps, help, help, help. I did this or I did that. And you're like, it's like, one o'clock in the morning i'm obviously not res responding because i'm supposed to be asleep but like people will just think oh no it, it, it'll be fine i'll just figure it out as i'm going but like some of these really intricate like programming stuff takes time and just like mason said oh if you say eight hours really they're only going to put four hours into it because some of these, i think yeah, that's being just, generous that, it, it really it really is because i had is. one guy Built the whole board, 32 by 16, gorgeous, tier, all sorts of these options. And he, like, all this routing through the HX stomp. And he's like, all right, thank you. I'm taking it to my gig right now. And I was like, oh, uh, so you're going to play it in manual mode? What's manual mode? Yeah, well, that's trouble. you know, like, where you can... That's where you hand off, in overdrive and say, just use this today. <laughs> just well, plug in an overdrive and go. Just, just, just do this. Just, just, yeah. No, I, it's like for, for me, I provide like tutorial walkthroughs of the whole controller. This is what page one, two, three, four, five, six does. Here's how to build a preset. But I send it to them like three or four days before they pick it up. So I was like, did, well, did you watch the video? Oh no, I didn't have time to watch the video. Oh, well, did you have time to read any of the manual to know how to... No, I didn't have time to do anything. So it's it's like if you don't have the time to, to sit down and learn, like me, learning a lot of the stuff that I'm doing now with video editing, I had to stop scrolling on Instagram or stop doing looking at gear purchases, and I had to sit down and learn how to do these other things because it's something I really wanted to do. 
It's the same thing with, with midis. Like people are like, man, how are you so smart? How can I say, how do I do this? I'm like, okay, create an, an IA, which is instant access. Do this, 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 and this step, and it will get you this function. Oh, how'd you, how'd you, how'd you learn that? Did you just, just happen to just, it just clicks? I'm like, no, it took a lot of years of just learning and reading and that kind of stuff just to kind of come familiar with it. Um, so I think putting in the work is a big part of it, personally. Just, just like just learning how to play design. guitar. Yeah. MIDI Everything. isn't some quick no. add-on. MIDI is another thing you need to kind of exactly. learn alongside proficiency on your instrument. Absolutely. I will um, pull up, if you guys are fine with me, pulling up another one. Um, this, this next diagram, the one I was talking to you guys about earlier, uh, is I have a rule of thumb when it comes to MIDI. So if you're listening, I made up a MIDI chart with, with the MC8. And it shows a bunch of lines going to all these different devices. Um, with MIDI, MIDI, as I explained to them earlier, MIDI is like a honey badger. It does not care. <laughs> honey, honey badgers don't care. Like, like there's like with MIDI, MIDI doesn't care if you have six devices, or sixteen devices. The only thing MIDI personally cares about is what MIDI channel each device is. So if you're like Oh, I have 16 MIDI control pedals, which I have done before. It is a lot of work and a lot of programming. Not personally for me, for a client, I did a board or a rack, I guess. The the great rack of 2021, we all know about. Um, but with, with MIDI controllers and switchers and everything, they all care about channels. Because then when you get into the channels, you can get into PC messages for presets, changing the presets, or you get into CC messages, which are control changes, which will do toggle on and off a foot switch. It'll do the sustain on one of like a hold feature. It can do a tap feature. So like there's a lot of different stuff that it can do. Um, but I'm curious uh, for you guys, how do I word this? Um, do you guys... Do you, do you, when you're doing your programming or, or anything, um, do you get a lot of people that are just really kind of like confused about PCs and CCs? Like how, how do you explain MIDI messages? Cause there's a lot of different MIDI messages and MIDI types of options. And you know, not everyone can be like, oh yeah, PC, CC, my macro, all these things and know what, you know, what the heck you're talking about. Mason, do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> sorry i have some thoughts as well so mason why don't you take it away and then i'll <laughs> chime in well usually i think the main focus for people that are kind of coming into this it will primarily be on on the the program changes you know all the pc stuff in there in there essentially just aligning whatever the preset is on let's say their strymon device to align with whatever it is that the PC number is, you know, and, and most of them have also like, you know, on Strymon's, one of the common questions I'll get about PC stuff is that Strymon start at zero, but your PCs start at one. And and so there's, there, most of the software now has like an offset so that like zero, like on a Strymon timeline, let's say that zero A would be one, you know, zero B would be two sort of thing. And so you can set basically align your your program changes to reflect that. For CCs, usually there's not those are probably less used um, than than the PC stuff, and that's really I would say the most common application, at least in in a lot of the rigs that I'll do. It will be more to turn stuff off, especially if it's like MIDI that's living outside of the switcher, so that you can use it to essentially reenact what it would represent if the pedal were actually wired into a loop so you could use your your cc to actually you know have a of not just a change of what preset but a change of the the on off state of the pedal and so you know you, every pedal will have you know some sort of value that you can set as far as a range to indicate whether the pedal's on or off state needs to be whatever it is and and so I would say just looking at it from the most basic standpoint, I would say from the PC perspective, it's all about just being able to align your preset on the pedal so that the controller knows what 
what what to send to the pedal so that it recalls that and, and brings that up whenever you select a preset. For the CC, I think the most critical thing is that it's changing the actual state of the pedal, not the preset. So turning the pedal on, turning the pedal off, and this is most common, again, when somebody's utilizing MIDI. And kind of in the example we gave earlier, like let's say you had five overdrive pedals, but had seven total pedals, two of which were MIDI control, like a delay and reverb that were after, let's say, your boss ES5 you would be dependent upon using your CCs to turn those on and off because they aren't able to occupy a loop inside of the switcher, but you still want them to act and behave and interact as though they're part of the other pedals. And so when you're setting presets, you want to not only be able to turn on your analog drives, but you want to be able to turn on and off your reverb or delay, depending on what you need, and also be able to use those uh, the PCs to change the the presets so that it is all in alignment with your other overdrive devices. I'd say that's the most simplified. Ver There's like of course that. way more complicated things you can do. Yeah, and that's I the like cool that. thing about MIDI is just when you think like, oh, I'm finally getting a handle on it. Brian <laughs> throws out a term like macros or sysx or <laughs> something like. There's always more to learn, and there's so much you can do with it. But uh, a way that I like to think about PCs and CCs. Um, if you're, if we're just talking about MIDI, this isn't a comprehensive definition, but it's almost like in a sense, a PC or program change or a preset that's saved on your pedal, your MIDI pedal is a grouping of, uh, CC values. And you're saying to the pedal, I want you to change all of these CCs at the same time. And that is going to be a preset or a grouping of all those CCs. And a CC on a on a timeline or a Maris Mercury Seven, which was in the in the diagram a second ago, a CC could be assigned to any one of those knobs on that pedal. So a CC can control just the mix. It can control just the feedback, turning the pedal on and off, so on and so forth. Uh, whereas a preset can't do any of those minute adjustments once the mm -hmm. preset is selected. It can basically take on the Maris, for example, the Mercury 7, it can take all of the knobs uh, in air quotes for those listening, turn them to set uh, values, and then that's the preset. The CC will then go into that preset once you've selected it. So you have your favorite re reverb sound you just turned on via MIDI. And it can then, after the fact, slightly tweak the mix value with an expression pedal. That would be done over CCs. And so mm -hmm. CCs are kind of like minute adjustments. PCs are bigger global changes for that pedal. That's kind of one way I like to look at it. Yeah. The other thing I think is really important to point out, not all MIDI pedals are created equal. You have mm -hmm. something like a timeline, a Strymon timeline. You can control anything on the timeline via Any MIDI. knob. Yep. Any knob. You go over to something like a Jackson Audio Bloom, you can't you can control a mode and you can turn it on and off, but you don't have full control over every knob on that pedal. I will so, say, let me let me chime in on the Bloom. The cool thing a lot of people don't know is that the Bloom, the Bloom knob for the boost, you can actually do MIDI over expression. So you can actually connect an expression to that and um, do it kind of like the like with the, the Vertex Boost, where you can swell up or down on the knob and the LED changes um, so there are some pedals that have hidden features. I just wanted to mention that one, yep. which is a really cool feature that a lot of people forget about. But and yeah, I appreciate that 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 definition, Grant, because I feel like I actually answered like a different question, which is like <laughs> how how no. how I would like simply explain like how I would implement a PC or a CC. But th I think that your um your analogy is actually really good about sort yeah. of the the CC is like a is sort of like a fine tuning of any individual parameter where the PC is kind of more of a generalized, uh, overarching, you know, changing multiple things at once. I liked your I answer that's a good too, way to think about it. Yeah, that, no, yeah. Yeah, it, and it, I guess it all just come, comes back to the, like what we've been talking about this whole time, is it takes research to figure out what you want to get and how you want to control it and what your MIDI pedal can actually do. Because again, not all MIDI pedals uh, implement MIDI in the same way. And some companies go a lot more in depth. It takes a lot more R&D to develop a fully capable MIDI pedal than it does to turn a pedal on and off via MIDI. 
Um, and, and so, there's no standards too anymore in MIDI. Yeah. There, well, there is a MIDI standard, but a lot of a lot of pedals now are non-standard. Like uh, I think Maris is non-standard. Empress is non-standard MIDI. Chase Bliss. Chase Bliss non-standard for the quarter inch. I should and that say. does and that doesn't mean that like you know just because they're using a, a, a TRS means it's non-standard. Although that may be not part of the MIDI protocol. Um, but like <laughs> there is actually like a MIDI standard that was established in the '80s. And I know uh, one of the guys that I know who, who I believe was on the original MIDI committee and there was like, MIDI it was a real thing, was uh, David Tarnowski from ADA. And I've talked to him about it before and like, you know, a lot of people don't realize, you know, when they see like a MIDI cable, they see the five pin DIN, which is the most common uh, usage or application of, of MIDI connectors. But the, the actual protocol really only requires uh, two leads in the in the way that they had determined the way that things would be is that the the manufacturer's responsibility would be to float or, or sorry to connect ground to the input of any midi of any midi in and then the and, and so the cable on the midi out would be the only place where the shield was connected so any midi out you'd have you know, like if you if, if you can imagine if you're watching my fingers here, the five pins, Bear right? Claw. You'd have your ground here, and then you'd have your other two, you know, active lines uh, to to the to the, on my index and ring finger. The 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 ground would only be connected on the MIDI out, and then on the MIDI in, the ground would be floated, and they presume that the 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 product, the pedal, the rack unit, whatever, would would have the the ground connected there, but it was difficult to ensure that retailers of five pin dins had the same, you know, we're floating the shield, you know, on the other side too. And so it, it, you know, like you don't see a directional MIDI cable is what I'm saying. So I think in essence, we've all sort of like everybody sort of gravitated toward just, you know, the, the, the pedal manufacturer is supposedly going to float the, the ground on the, on the input and the ground's going to stay connected on the output and and you you could get away with you know just using a, a a mic cable to make MIDI and in fact I use you know mini mic cables and lav mic cables all the time to make MIDI because you don't need uh you don't need four conductors in a ground you know or a shield yeah. to yep. make to make MIDI and I think that that's one thing that confuses people is they they think that they need to to have all five pins connected and 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 in truth you could just connect the two you could have some issues uh, with a ground loop. Uh, potentially, yes. but I've even had situations where I've actually had to go in and cut a um, the shield off of one side because there was a ground loop because the pedal was non-standard and it had it was creating an oscillation when the MIDI was connected. Mm, okay, which is another yeah. whole thing of <laughs> that's the whole thing. <laughs> it is painful to troubleshoot sometimes, and you're getting these weird issues and glitches with MIDI, and and it's it can be very frustrating, especially if you're new to it. Um, yes. very frustrating and that was yeah. rare i think that's a, one, i've only had one instance where yeah. where midi itself was was having uh an oscillation issue and that was how i resolved it. and i actually had talked to david tarnowski about it you know because he's was really not knowledgeable in development of a lot of the midi stuff but and you no, know, for him it drives him crazy because he 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 knows how much time they spend to develop it. But I can also understand, you know, like when you start getting into alternative plug types and things like that and you're trying to you're trying to optimize it yeah. for your pedal. I think it, you know, I, I can understand the, the reason to do it. I don't, you know, I don't make any MIDI pedals, so I don't have a dog in this fight. But. <laughs> well, I mean, I I have people that are like, and there's a lot of companies that make these custom cables. I think Grant, I think you guys will do, I'm not sure if you do like five pen to eighth or to quarter yep. inch here. So like you can order perfectly made cables from Grant on their website of these five pin to this you know, let's say quarter inch TRS cable. Um, and it will do that exact pedal. Um, or you can, you can do the same route. You can still get custom cables from grant from MIDI or for TRS or anything. Uh, but you can do like a Strymon. I think it's like, I think it's called the conduit. I can never remember the name of the pedal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually don't install a lot of them. I do more of the MIDI box fours from disaster area. Uh, because the MIDI the MIDI box four has a has dip switches on the top and allows you to change the 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 type of wiring that the the um, 
the plug yeah, is. That, that's is, that's like I think the best product for that. Yeah, by far. Like I have the one issue with really it, cool. which I'll bring up after you're done. Well, like the conduit's really cool. The problem is this: is that sometimes the MIDI box that that box I tuck it away somewhere in a really tight spot that it's just really awkward and I can fit it there. But then it's like the change of pin configuration, unplug the cable and plug it back in as many times until you get your color. And I'm like, okay, so I got to pop it up and I got to unplug it and plug it back in and it turns whatever color. So I've just focused on staying with the MIDI box four, uh, just because those dip switches, you just flip the dip switch. And if you change out your pedal from a Jackson, which I think is, on the ring to like a um another company chase that bliss. like a chase bliss that the, it's a completely different orientation you're not having to unplug anything because when you start unplugging stuff stuff starts going wrong you plugged in the in to the out or it's you you're like oh you only unplugged the cable for two seconds and i laid them down in this certain area well they got mixed up for that second and now they're all confused uh, where the MIDI box forward, you just hit those little dip switches. But I would, I'm actually really curious, Grant. What, what were you going to say big about issue, the MIDI box four? I would say my big issue is actually not with the MIDI box four. It's with the companies that use TRS MIDI ins and don't isolate the MIDI input. Yeah, which means yeah. you're susceptible to ground loops on your MIDI chain. And then you get to the MIDI box four, which isolates its main MIDI input, but not the individual MIDI outputs. This probably okay. sounds like total garbage if you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, but stick with me. The big issue is that the MIDI box four doesn't isolate the quarter inch outputs. So if you put on a Strymon Iridium, Strymon does not isolate their MIDI inputs and a Maris Mercury seven, which I believe are the same. I could be wrong. Um, then you now can get a ground loop between the Iridium and the Mercury 7, as an example. Whereas So are you just cutting the shield then on, on, on one side to avoid it? You could do something like that, or the easier solution in my mind for relatively the same price is Morningstar's MIDI box does eight pedals oh, okay. and every output is isolated. I and haven't you can seen them reconfigure yet. everything as well. So... That's my one issue there is that you have to take more consideration into what you're sending. Are the inputs isolated, which is not in the manual and it's not on their website. You have to know to look for it. So there's, there's like these, there's all these quirks and I don't want this to like dissuade anyone from, from going with MIDI. Um, but all this to say is there's just, there's a, there's a lot of little things to it. And mm, lots of gotchas. There's, That's why you yeah. hire Goodwood or you hire Brian O'Million. Lots of fish in they, the sea. There's, there's just all. a lot they've of seen stuff. It all. Yeah. Well, honestly, you know what it really is, is we've done enough rigs to know <laughs> that there are so many little frustrations. And oh, man, just man. learning that one thing, like, oh, the MIDI outputs aren't isolated on the input of Strymon or the output of the MIDI box four. That is hours of just like, why the heck isn't this working? What's going like it's hours. it's just frustrating. And so that's of, where <laughs> lots like of even for this podcast, <laughs> exactly. Like now <laughs> you've just saved yourself potentially, you know, hours or the product's broken or I need to remake the cable or whatever it is. Check the isolation and ask yeah. the manufacturer. Like and, just and sometimes <laughs> sometimes you can just reach out to even us. Like there's there's been times I do it still to this day where I'm like I don't know how to do this on the RJM and I'll send Ron an email and bless his heart how fast he responds all the time Seconds. like it's like are Shout you out Ron. Yep. Unbelievable. absolutely love them which is funny because there's times that people will message me on Instagram and I'll just happen to be co going through a message and I'll respond within like four seconds and they're like man were you just waiting for that message I'm like no I just happened to be you on pre-typed like, you just I you just, your own million senses <laughs> were tingling. out exactly, but like that's how it is for some companies. Is like you can reach out to them or even us because there's there's been things that like I have literally lost sleep over at night because I yep. can't figure out why this why I'm getting a buzz in the MIDI chain, but as soon as I unplug the MIDI, it goes away. And then I found out after hours later that I like wired wired one of the plugs, but one little hair on the MIDI cable was like touching a different pin. Yep. And like, as soon as I like, open, I was like, oh my gosh. So I cleared it out, 
<laughs> remove the heat shrink, move that little, little, like literally a hair of ground and the buzz went away. Like little stuff like that. Um, if that, like little stuff that you would never think about, like we, I think we've all kind of just like experienced it and been like, oh yeah, check this, check this. And people are like, oh, you're just telling us no, like these are like actual, tr like I ask people nine questions for this one issue like, why are you asking all these questions? I'm like, well, because I can know how to troubleshoot off of these answers you give me. So, yeah, I we're, all of this to say is the same thing is that there's a lot of options when it comes to MIDI. Let's be honest. There's just there's not one perfect end all, you know, give me the best you got. Give me something that can do everything. And then it will follow with nine questions of us saying, what is this? What do you need for this? What is this? What is this? So. I would say, I don't even know how long we've been doing this, to wrap everything up, if we want to give our final words of wisdom for people that are just looking to get into the, the MIDI game, they're, you know, they're curious, you know, they're they're on their road to Tone Town, and they're, they're, they see those exit <laughs> signs that says, all like fast food places, I don't know if you guys have exit signs that have fast food places on them, here in Texas they do because we love food, but it, you know, it gives you all these MIDI options, like what do you, like what do you, like what do you want, what do you want to say? Graham? I would say uh, our exit signs are just to maple syrup shops, and oh. I'm okay with that. <laughs> love it. Uh, lots of maple syrup <laughs> options up here in Canada. Um, Grant has a tap in his backyard. <laughs> multiples, multiples. Yep, one tap for every day of the week is uh, how the <laughs> saying goes. Um, I would say if you're looking to get into MIDI, I would boil MIDI down to flexibility and control. It gives you more control over your. This is when it's working the way it should. More control over your pedal board, more flexibility as well within that control. And like a prime example. Uh, which we haven't really touched on today is is you know expression over MIDI. Mm -hmm. You can create a sound on your pedal board with MIDI, and then with an expression pedal, you can control any parameter that that pedal allows: mix, feedback, decay. You can turn buttons on and off with expression in real time, so you can make your delay effects more wet or you can go completely dry over expression you can do multiple things at the same time tons of flexibility tons of control um the downsides to midi i would say for those considering it is it's harder to uh, it's harder to change the midi program you have prepared let's say for a live set of music on the fly it's like oh i messed up the program while you're in the song you're locked in. Like you are going to be using that preset the way it stands. There's no bending yep. down and quickly turning the knob of the pedal. There's no equivalent for MIDI that at least that I'm aware of. And so that's yep. where there is more control and flexibility, but then you're also locked into that world of MIDI for that gig until you have five minutes to make the changes you need to make. Um, so there's pros and cons. I would not say uh, I am not a MIDI evangelist as in everyone should be using it. For the right person, MIDI is awesome. For the wrong person, it's a nightmare. And yeah. so that's where, like we've kind of been alluding to, I would just get into MIDI slowly. Get a base, like Mason suggested, get a basic MIDI controller to start. Learn how to do a preset. And then just see what you think of it. Buy one used for 150 bucks, a MIDI controller, and then sell yeah. it for the same price if you don't like it. And then now you know, you know, MIDI is not for me, or maybe there's more to look into here, and, and it might really help you out live. The I think MIDI at its best is the last thing I'll say, and then I'll stop talking. Uh, MIDI at its best, you hit one button on your pedal board, you change tempo, presets, what the expression pedal controls song name shows up and the section of the song you're in you know for verse and you hit one button and you can play the verse you hit the button right beside it now you're perfectly set up for a lead solo or a guitar solo uh for the next section of the song and you don't have to have your head down uh looking at what pedals you need to hit you can actually just do the one thing and you're off to the races. And honestly, from there, you can have Ableton control everyone's MIDI pedal board on stage, the lighting yep. rig, the smoke machine, what type Everything. of coffee you're going to get. Like MIDI <laughs> is so powerful 
but it's a big learning curve. And so that's where just don't get the, the most complex thing out there. Get something basic, learn the basics, and inevitably you're going to add more and more layers of knowledge like you do with your guitar playing as the years go on. Um, but I would start basic so you just don't get discouraged uh, right at the beginning and l- miss out on something that could really help you if you yeah. put the time in. Yeah. The MIDI smoke machine too is don't, don't, uh, don't discount that. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Seriously. I'm, but I'm I curious mean, about the coffee one though. That one, yeah. like how can I hit a espresso button? over MIDI? Where? <laughs> that needs to be a thing. Well, that, that needs to, that, Maybe even that triple filtered water. I mean, you might even it be able does. to hook up a, a, a water, a water machine on stage and it just filters right into your cup. Man. Uh, just get it like a little, like uh, a MIDI relay from Microsoft exactly. Linum, which yep. I found out they make them for like the um, triple pole double throw switches you can replace them with this like circuit and i was yep. like well what <laughs> i was like yep. how can it's i incorporate so cool. that into everything yeah um <laughs> yeah that's amazing <laughs> what about you mason what do you what do you want to say i i think that the the biggest thing is is really being honest with yourself about your tolerance level for learning midi and really don't not not exaggerating where you are i think i think the best pedal boards that have the best results for the their for our customers or, or or clients are are pedal boards that have been where they've spent a lot of time vetting what's going on it and how it's going to be used yeah and it wasn't improvised on a whim and you know because they saw something on Instagram or on YouTube and they're like oh I want that thing because th- these rigs are constantly evolving and in, in, in very few people's rigs stay the same and even if you are going to endeavor into MIDI you're probably going to change your your tastes your 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 pedal choices and things of that nature so understanding that this is just kind of one step in that direction and that you're likely going to buy more sophisticated, more complicated MIDI controllers as you become more adept with the one that you have. And I think it's just like the custom shop analogy. Like you won't be able to appreciate what the RJM brings to the table until you've really yeah. exhausted the options in something that's not as sophisticated. Yeah, And that's not to say that, you know, RJM isn't great because it is. But I think that that for some people, the 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 knowledge gap to have basic facility on the RGM is is quite a bit higher than it is on on a Boss ES5, which is sort of like I'm not gonna say exactly a step above a true bypass looper, but not too far removed from that in terms of like at its basic level what it can do. So I think that you just need to be considerate of that. And in the best pedal boards, again, I think are are for people that are good editors of the things that they actually need, and they're able to edit out stuff that they don't they, that they actually aren't comfortable with and don't pretend to to be. Um, yeah. And so I think you just really need to be honest with yourself about you know your level of involvement and what you're able to commit to. Yeah, yeah. I w- I mean, I would say, as someone who has had a plethora. Of different types of setups. <laughs> Let's be honest. Over the past year, I've had a plethora of setups of my personal self, from P- PBC sixes, the PBC tens, to no switcher. Is that it? It comes down to, uh, also time. That's a big part about it. You, if you're investing your time not only in learning the controller, but also in programming it. To yeah. someone that works a forty hour week like me, sometimes 50 or more, even more, has kids, has a wife, has things that we do. Obviously, I don't live and breathe working and playing guitar. Like, it's what I do for 40 hours, but then I have other things to do with my family and stuff. Go to the zoo, do all these other things, grocery shop. Starbucks. That Starbucks triple filtered water, Panera, like the all these things that we do. <laughs> I, I love Panera. That's my like. <laughs> listen, Panera. Don't have sponsor. it in Canada. I'm saying, oh, I'm going. So I'm going to Michigan tomorrow, and in Michigan we have um, Tim Hortons. 
I don't know oh, if you said you liked him yeah. or it's, I don't yep. drink coffee. We already know this, yeah. but I do like their hot chocolate. Keep your expectations and low and you'll be fine. Very low. Very low. Yep. But I do like their donuts and their hot chocolate. But yep. anyway, <laughs> doing all these things, all the, like life, let's be honest, life gets really busy. And there was times when I had a controller that I was like, oh, yeah, I'll practice the night before. And then I didn't practice. So my con- entire controller was programmed. Oh, I do it all. The t- I do it, unfortunately, all the time. And a lot of people get irritated with me. They're like, oh, how can you still play? So how, how can you still play the songs? Well, I've been playing these songs for years. And, you know, it, I kind of I kind of adapt. But that's still not a good excuse. What I'm saying is, is I was stuck with that set list from the week before. So I was scrambling the whole set during practice, getting my tempos, getting the right gain stages that I wanted, doing all these different things because I didn't invest the time that I needed to do it. So you got to just make sure that like you set aside your practice time to also do some programming, which is fine because after a while it becomes easy. So... It's valuing your time and how much time you have to do those things. If you're the guy that sits down every single night and practices for one hour, then you're going to be fine. But if you're the you're on the whim, flying like you're at this, you know, edge of your seat, may not be for you. Um, but also just do your do your research. Talk to people. If you see other people that have that controller, ask them some questions. You, We all love to be asked questions about our pedal boards, let's be honest. For the longest time, I would be like hoping someone would walk up to me and ask me a question. <laughs> Never asked me a question after church, ever. And half the time, I'm like, yeah, people don't care. And then the one time I had someone ask me a question, I was running a Kemper. And it goes, man, what were you using? I said, oh, it's a Kemper. And he goes, oh. And just turns around and walks away. Like the worst experience. I can just see you on stage like, hey, Brian, can I go get you a coffee? It's MIDI. I connected MIDI to the board. That's why it's it's ready. (laughs) It's ready now. (laughs) So like is, you know, it's ask questions. We all like that kind of stuff. Obviously, if you see someone that tours a lot and you ask them questions, some some of these bigger band artists, they may not respond, which which is fine because they're, they're busy and everything. But just ask. Ask questions. Ask in YouTube comments. Like, get all that knowledge. It's it's like anything you do that before you buy, you do your research. Just do the research and have fun. Don't let it be intimidating. So that's what I would say. I think that wraps it up for today. All right. Well, one last thing I want to mention before we complete the day. So I want to thank our sponsor for the show, which is the Guitar Sanctuary, where Brian is seated right now. If you're watching us on YouTube, he's inside the pedalboard building estate of the Guitar Sanctuary. He has his own area. And if you're interested in any of the products that we talked about today, we talked about a few different controllers. We talked about the MIDI box. A lot of these things are available right at the Guitar Sanctuary. And of course, if you're interested in having any pedal boards built, Brian offers those services through the Guitar Sanctuary so you can reach out there. And they carry Vertex pedals. They carry Grant's Goodwood Audio products also there. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, all available there at the Guitar Sanctuary. And he's holding up a Vertex pedal board platform as well. It's all available there. So thank you to them for sponsoring the show. And uh, until next week, We will uh, see you a little further down the road to Tone Town. See you guys. See ya.